Uh, this is, uh, are there any teachers in here? Any educators? All right. Uh, anybody in here that ever hated school? I saw a lot of teachers raise their hand on that one. Y'all are my favorite type of teachers. All right, so this is for anybody who was ever a teacher, ever a student. That's most people I'm guessing. Uh, this is called Grammatically Correct. One, the word crashes into my left ear like a well-aimed brick. I can't stand him. He's so ghetto. I overhear at 15th and Broadway from a woman talking on her cell louder than her designer heels clicking down the sidewalk. She's sharing her disgust for an ex-boyfriend or maybe a neighbor, or maybe one of my students. Two, West Oakland is rugged and beautiful like Wild West. Soccer games on hard pavements, the smell of your mom's cornbread, your best friend cheating you in a game of dominoes. West Oakland is extra security at McClyman's games. Bobby Hutton's park after dark, the bullet scar you can't hide and don't want to. West Oakland, it's just down the block. So I bike to work today. Hear this woman at 15th and Broadway talking about one man like he's a whole neighborhood. Maybe he's an ex-boyfriend, maybe one of my students. Three, Venice, Italy. Uh -huh. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Is a tourist trap. Water roads and Hollywood settings. Romance novels and James Bond getaways. It was home to Vivaldi and Marco Polo. It was home to Hebrews. 15th century Jews expelled from Spain the same year they gave Columbus three ships to go get some quick tea from India. <laughs> Venice, the city of rivers, needed no walls to wall my people in. Forced all the Jews into il ghetto Vecchio, the world's oldest ghetto for the world's oldest people. The first ones lucky enough to have that word slurred at us to enjoy such a privilege. Four, Gaza. Five, the high-heeled woman with an iPhone at 15th and Broadway, maybe a bank manager, maybe my cousin, calls him so ghetto. I want to get off my bike throw her phone and matching purse into the nearest brick wall and ask her, lady, do you even know what that word means? What do you have against medieval Italian Jews? Because <laughs> I got some Roman ancestors somewhere who will fuck you up. <laughs> but instead, I stay silent, keep biking, no words again. Six, I know a mother in West Oakland who prays every night for her three sons. One studies at Berkeley, another at San Quentin. She hasn't seen either in years. Her youngest sits in a high school classroom waiting for me to come teach line breaks and resistance. He is never late for class. I might have been on time the first day. Maybe. He writes strong and brilliant, like my brothers, he tells me. I don't want to fail him or his mother. Seven. High school juniors in the Gaza Strip cannot see Ramallah, let alone Orinda. Their school, bulldozed by Jerusalem, redlined by Cairo, cut off by Washington, alone in the desert. Three walls and a sea, no oasis, no Hebrew University scholarship for underprivileged youth. Vini, Vidi, Vici, if we are the world's oldest people, how can we conquer so quickly and forget where we come from? Eight, I want to jump inside her iPhone, become a ringtone, and every time she says it, blare out, ghetto is not fabulous, but it's not no curse word either. It is hard fathers and harder mothers, 
making a dollar out of a peso and 15 cents. It is 37 overcrowded poems I hold in my hands every Monday spring semester only to let them slip through my fingers too quick every summer break. Whatever it is, ghetto is not a fucking adjective. If you must, the grammatically correct term would be ghetto-ish. <laughs> But that doesn't sound right, does it? Sounds too much like poor-ish, black-ish, stereotypical rich yuppie woman with fake Gucci heels and iPhone-ish. <laughs> you said he taught ghetto, but who can't speak proper English? Nine. I locked my bike next to the school. An extra bolt around the front tire, because I know. The first floor hallway smells like a broken toilet. The bell rings when I walk in, but all my students are already ready and waiting for me in the classroom. One of them, the youngest of three sons, smiles from the front row and taps his watch at me. <laughs> I know, I say, I'm late, but I'm here. <clears throat> So let's get to it, because we've got some work to do. Thank you, guys.